This morning in our Secrets Revealed series, the woman you're about to meet is, as they say, breaking cover. That is the title of Michelle Rigby Assad's new book about how she went from a Southern Belle homecoming queen to a CIA spy. I got recruited by the CIA out of Georgetown. I'm from rural central Florida, um, but I had a passion for the Middle East. I worked undercover as a counterterrorism officer, and uh, I worked in the clandestine service, which means that I spent the majority of my time abroad in the Middle East. And so while I can't specify most of the places I worked, I can tell you that one of my tours was in Baghdad. Baghdad and a host of other very difficult locations, war zones, and a few places that were kidnapping and carjacking capitals of the world. So very dicey places. Our job is to collect intelligence about the plans and intentions of the terrorists to stop the attacks from occurring. Um, there was so much uh, intimidation and angst about whether I could do this job. And of course, dealing with terrorist sources who have very radical ideology was a huge challenge because as a female, in their opinion, in their mind, I shouldn't be working outside of the home. So I would say one of the most difficult postings was Baghdad, and that's because we were living in the green zone and the terrorists were lobbing rockets at us, and so there was a lot of shelling that went on every single day. In order to get from the airport to the CIA compound, and we had to take low-flying helicopters that skimmed the tops of buildings. And so there was always the fear that we could get shot down at any moment in time. So there was a lot of praying that went on in those moments. A lot of praying. <laughs> We're joined now by Michelle Rigby Assad. Michelle, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. So how does a sweet Southern Belle homecoming ballerina wind up a secret undercover CIA agent. If you would have told me growing up I would do that, I would not have believed you at all. I, you would have, I've never dreamed of working for the CIA. I, I didn't even realize that was a real job. <laughs> <laughs> right, now, I, you know, when I watched that package, the first thing I thought was, she's so smiley. How do they have a smiley spy? <laughs> <laughs> it disarms people and that can be quite useful. That, you write about that in the book. So she writes, I bet you a lot of people here can relate to this. You were born with a strong, empathetic nature. You were proficient, as many women are, in reading others, including their body language. You write, the traits I always considered weaknesses were actually perceived as strengths by the CIA, because espionage is all about psychology. Exactly. So how did you first realize that all those things were gifts that you could make money off of. <laughs> Actually, it took me years in the CIA and before I realized that. Because when I first walked into the CIA and I looked around, I looked so different than all of these people in leadership positions. And as a classic overachiever, I thought, you know, I'm going to be lucky just to be good enough. Mm -hmm. And then it took me years in the CIA and it took a rock. And, and when I finally got in front of these bad guys, these terrorists, and got to debrief them, I suddenly had this aha moment, like, wow, I'm actually really good at this job mm -hmm. because of my empathy and my intuition. And I finally now had the confidence to be who I've always been and to use that in operations. To serve your country. Because exactly. you didn't really make a lot of money as a CIA agent. <laughs> um, is it true that you actually, like you were at Georgetown, you were proficient in Arabic, Middle Eastern studies, but then you just kind of put your resume in like the CIA hiring box and the next thing you know you got called? Yeah, I put that resume in every job box at that time. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I just threw it in. There were like, you know, 500 resumes in that batch and I thought, you know, I'll never hear anything. So I was just completely shocked when three weeks later a recruiter called me. Do you get to tell your family, do you tell mom like, so I'm, I'm going to be a CIA spy. I've been gone for like 10 years. I mean, what do, you, what do you have to tell everybody in your life? So the CIA says, you can tell your family as long as you know they can keep that secret. And so I did tell my family, and I think I scared them. I'm sure. <laughs> and then I scared them repeatedly over the years. Um, every time they heard what the new tour was, you know, uh, there was a lot of praying going on for mm -hmm. us. Yeah. Oh, I could, that means I could never tell my mother. She's got the biggest <laughs> mouth ever. She would tell everybody. <laughs> she, she would never keep that secret. So proud, right? <laughs> never. All right, so Michelle was not alone while fighting terror in the Middle East. Coming up, 
a real life Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Remember that, Angelina and Brad? We're gonna hear from her husband, Joseph, after the break. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.